I can start by saying I really enjoyed Chemical Hearts. I just thought it was really, there's just something oh. about it just really sort of sweet and kind of really harks back to the kind of good sort of high school teen movies I grew up Thanks, with. man. So I really got a real kick out of it. But um, I'll get started. But what, what was the, what was it initially attracted you to getting involved in Chemical Hearts? What was that first thing that made you think, right, this is a, a character and a story I want to, I want to get involved in? No, that's a good question. Yeah, I, um, you know, I thought there was like, there was like a story there. I mean, there is like, something um when i initially read it that was um that was you know interesting i mean both the characters have like a lot going on it's it was like a little bit dark in ways um and then also the character henry seems to go through a bit of like uh maybe like a, a transformation throughout the film or i mean he's like experiencing something for the first time um, and I don't know, there's like interesting layers to play with, I suppose. Um, and then also our, our director, Rich, is like, you know, uh, I watched his movie, he did before Southside with you, and I thought he was a good director, so that, that was a draw as well. Yeah. So had you uh, read the kind of the story it was based on, or, or do you not, do you, I mean, do you find that necessary as an actor to go back and read kind of source materials, or do you find sometimes it can be a bit sort of, um, I don't know, can it be too much, too many references that almost adds a pressure to a performance? That is, yeah, that's a really good question too, because it does like go back and forth, I think. It also depends on like what you're working on. You know, I mean, all these things like, I don't know, at least for me, it, like it kind of changes every time in terms of, I guess, how you like go about something or go about when it comes to like working on something. So, I mean, I did read this one. Um, uh, and it was nice to be able to like see some of uh, Henry's thoughts because um, he, you know, narrates the book. Um, so that was like, that was helpful in ways. Um, but I mean, the book kind of is fairly different, I feel like, than the movie, like in tone. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, so that's kind of an answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> How is it working with, with Lily? I mean, obviously, there's all, you've always got to build up a, a good rapport with, with your kind of on-screen uh, colleagues. But when you're, when you're dealing with a, a romantic tale of this nature, quite an intense romantic tale, how important was it for you that you guys just got on well, that you guys had a kind of good friendship offset? And, and did that, was that something that came, that came quite quickly for you both? Yeah, man, that's, I mean, that's super important. I mean, thankfully, you know, we, well, yeah, I mean, thankfully we had known each other since we were, like, we'd worked together when we were 15. Um, so that was uh, really helpful. It's like really helpful to already have a rapport with her. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it, it just kind of depends because there's, you know, thankfully uh, we were able to, get on um and uh you know just like each other as um people i suppose um and and that's like very lucky in ways because a lot of times you don't find that and honestly it's like there's like not too much you can do at a certain point like that just comes down to like just a basic sort of chemistry chemistry i mean you do the best you can obviously i don't know you know i hear that like sometimes in sort of romantic movies when they hate each other sometimes that's when it like works the best so like I have no idea <laughs> <laughs> but um because how was your kind of school experience for you because I mean obviously you're, in this film the character's kind of obviously very driven and he's obviously editing the kind of the magazine and stuff I'm just wondering how how he compares to to what you were like at, at high school were you quite similar to this were you were you the sort of person that stay behind and sort of like take part in initiatives like that and kind of school papers or were you the sort of get in and get out type like me <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i would say there is definitely a difference when it comes to that when you say get in and get out type that relates uh yeah i mean i didn't you know it wasn't a i would say it, it was pretty standard at like american experience i guess uh i wouldn't say that my experience was like really different or anything like that than most, I, you know, yeah, it was, it was pretty standard. It wasn't, it wasn't super crazy. 
Yeah. And you mentioned obviously the character going through kind of things for the first time, you know, kind of, well, most importantly in this movie, I guess, is the kind of feeling of love and, and, and sort of, and I was just wondering about, do you get nostalgic playing characters that, are re that go through that? Because you kind of, in some ways, do you get to relive some of those emotions again for the first time through the <laughs> prism of the role? Yeah, dude, no, it's kind of weird. You know, he's about 17, 18, and, you know, I was about, uh, like, 22 when I did this. So it is uh, a little bit strange to, like, go back to that headspace because, you know, because, like, you know, because even though it is, like, a few years, like, those those few years are, like, kind of, a, like, a big deal, I feel like, around, um, uh, like, these ages um that I'm talking about so um yeah it's it's definitely yeah I mean it's just fucking weird to to try and like uh, you know but I mean also you're looking at someone else's like emotions and high school experience and like everyone's experience isn't the same um so that's also like a challenge in a, you know in itself in a way um because, you know, you want to look at this person and, and see what their experience was like and, you know, it is accurate. So you're kind of, you know, it's a mix of going back in time, but also a totally different, um, totally different, like, person, I guess or character or whatever and of course the um the character in this he's kind of like like we said he is into kind of writing and editing did you have a kind of backup career for yourself in mind any kind of like hobbies that you thought if acting doesn't work out that's something i could do one day sadly not really <laughs> i wish like you know i mean like uh yeah i mean i don't know if it's like sadly but it's like you know yeah you know, i wish i could tell you i was also some sort of like scientist on the side uh, which maybe i am i don't know i'm gonna keep some mystery i guess but uh no i don't really have anything like actually realistic i think that i could tell you yeah i don't i remember when i first saw <laughs> in uh brad status and i was in toronto and i honestly was, i love that film so much and i thought your performance was so terrific and i've okay. been following your career since but i was just wondering about what you learned from ben stiller on that on that project because obviously the two of you worked so closely on that movie and he's about as experienced as they get and i was just wondering about that 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 experience for you collaborating with one of the kind of hollywood's most hard-working kind of like uh, you know sort of successful yeah. people and i'm just wondering about what you took from that from that experience with them yeah i love the guy i mean i'm very thankful for the experience sometimes i think about that experience and i'm like oh fuck i work with him that's that's crazy <laughs> um but uh yeah i there's there's i think there's honestly like a lot it's kind of hard to like in point i think there's also things that like i probably don't even realize that i learned yeah so it's hard to say i mean i think it was just being in the presence of someone that is like you know has had like i don't know that many things that he's done like turn out to be successful um and not turn out because it's luck you know because he's like talented and a, a great writer and also director um so I think, I think just being around someone like that, there's just a lot of things, I mean, hopefully that you, that you pick up. Yeah. No, no, but it's because I was wondering too, I mean, if you ever get kind of starstruck still when you're on set, I mean, is it, I mean, maybe at the beginning, you know, when you first kind of would go on to set, when you would see people and think, oh my God, that's, look who I'm working with today. Or is that kind of past now? Is there yeah. a sense of excitement when, when you work with the best? Yeah, I don't think something like that's past. I, I saw, um, do you know, what's his name? Uh, I don't know, the Jonathan Reese. Is that how you pronounce his last oh, name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I thought, well, I, I said, no. I, to be honest with you, I say Price, but to be honest with you, it could easily be Priest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Price? Oh, geez, I don't, I don't know. The Welsh actor, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, I, I watched an interview he did recently, and he was talking about, like, working with Tom Hanks, and he's like, yeah, you're partly, like, trying to do a scene with him, but also, you know, what's, like, when he was doing Mr. Rogers, like, you're trying to do a scene and, you know, work with him as Mr. Rogers, but then you keep realizing, like, oh, fuck, this is Tom Hanks. Like, I don't know. It was just, uh, <laughs> I, I felt like I could relate to that in, like, some sense. Uh, I mean, at least with, like, 
Ben or something like that. Oh, Matthew Reese. Sorry, I thought you said Jonathan. Pri- I thought you meant Jonathan Price. Yeah, I, I did say Jonathan Reese. Yeah. I totally got his name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Matt, yeah. He's a he's a great actor. Yeah, no, but I, to be honest with you, I don't know how anyone works opposite Tom Hanks and doesn't sit there the whole time thinking, "Oh my God, I'm working with Tom Hanks." <laughs> I don't. I don't know how anyone could yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know unless you spent like a lot of time with him or like you already knew him or something like that, or maybe you just have like a certain. You know, I think there's some people that have a certain way about them, maybe, and they just don't, like, give a fuck in general. Um, or if you happen to maybe never, ever see any of his movies, which I, I don't know how that would be possible. <laughs> so you mentioned, obviously, Ben being a director, and I, I was reading that you're working with Nat Wolf in his directorial debut. I was just wondering, with that in mind... Uh-huh. Yeah, if you've um, if you've ever given any, I mean, obviously, maybe you just far into the future. But do you, have, do you harbor any amb- ambitions to one day get behind the lens yourself and, and get into that? Sort um, of- you know, I, yeah, I think uh, I think there's thoughts um, about that, um, but I think for the moment, you know, I think I suppose acting is like my focus, but. Uh, you know, I do have, um, I definitely do have thoughts about something like that. Because I mean, so your career is just rising and rising and obviously Chemical Hearts is a big project for you. I'm just wondering about if you get stopped in the street yet, if that, if, and if there is a particular part or a character you've played that generates the most attention from, from strangers and from fans. Um, you know, recently since like Euphoria came out, that was kind of one. Um, but now, you know, it's kind of cool, you like, Everyone, like, wears a mask and also, like, everyone's dealing with, like, you know, I don't know, bigger problems than, like, movies and thinking uh, TV shows. So, like, I don't know if anyone gives a fuck, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, not, you know, not of lately for sure. But, um, uh, yeah, in the past for a minute, um, like, euphoria a little bit, but it's never been insane. So how has lockdown been for you? Because I guess with your job, you do a lot of traveling and stuff. Have you quite enjoyed the kind of the downtime and being at home? Or are you just itching to get back out there and get shooting again? Yeah, I mean, to work again would be nice, um, for sure. But at the same time, I don't know. It's enjoyable. Um, well, enjoyable. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, I don't know. I think everyone's in like... Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, it's a painful time, I think, for the world. So I don't know if enjoyable is like the right word. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I think I've been like just really doing what everyone else has been doing, like just trying to get, just do your best. Yeah. Were there, were there any kind of projects that had to get halted halfway through that you've been sort of sitting on waiting? And, and how is that for an actor if you were working on something or reading a character? Is, is it hard to kind of have this long pause and then go back into the same mindset? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, well, you know, Euphoria was, I mean, we're, we were getting like very close to starting. I mean, I think it was like a week away. Um, thankfully, uh, you know, I, thankfully I wasn't like act, actively um, shooting something. I don't know, like I feel so bad for like actors or directors that were like actively working like in the middle of something. I mean, like I can't imagine if I was like doing this movie or like literally anything else and you had to like stop halfway through. I mean, that would suck. Um, but um yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't, but it, thankfully that wasn't, that wasn't the case um, in my particular like situation. So my, my final question is just about Dash and Lily, because I was reading about that today. That looks like a cool project. What, what can you tell, because I mean, obviously when it comes to Netflix, I think anything that they put out at the moment is always exciting. So I just wonder what you can tell us about, about that series and, and your character and what, what fans or, or what prospective fans can expect from that show. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we got Sean Levy producing it. You did, like, Stranger Things. Um, you know, he's also a really he's a great director um, and just producer as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, it takes place in New York. Um, it's about, like, uh, it takes place in New York over the holidays and, like, a boy and a girl um, 
like exchanging, they've never met each other and they're like exchanging a notebook uh, back and forth and like kind of getting each other to like do dares over in New York. So I, I am like, I don't know, especially, um, you know, New York is, I mean, they definitely went through like a very hard time and still are going through a hard time. And I think uh, by the end of this year, you know, I, I don't think New York is going to look most likely I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but most likely will not look how it did uh, last year during Christmas. You know, there's not going to be like, you know, the big crowds or whatever going around New York. So I think it could be kind of cool and a little bit nostalgic, I guess, for people to watch it and be able to see, I guess, New York how it was last year. So hopefully that's like a nice thing. Um, but uh, yeah, man, no, it's a it's a cool story. I think I think it'll be good. All right, here I hear Netflix is happy, anyways. Yeah, that <laughs> that's always helps. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. All right, man, you too. Uh, have a good vacation, man. That's cheers, man. Bye, bye. See you then. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey.